Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome! Today we're going to talk about color correction in Blender, and how to basically remove any sort of artificial tinting that you might get from, for example, an HDRI environment, or just having a complex scene in general. Now, this kind of light tinting is not always a bad thing, and especially when you're doing a final shot, it can actually look really good. But especially when you're trying to make assets for use later on, when you're trying to make assets that you will use over and over and over again, it can be very, very important to make sure that your gold looks like gold, your rubber looks like rubber, and it's all the color that you expect it to be. And often, when you're calibrating these assets, it's also good to throw them in an HDRI environment. Now, of course, this poses a bit of a problem generally because an HDRI will tint your object, making it hard to tell what color it is. But on the flip side, it also will allow you to see things like reflections and see the roughness of your surface when you're building your materials. It can really, really help to have an HDRI environment. Now, turns out these don't actually completely negate each other. You just have to know how to color correct. And this will allow you to make assets that are easily reusable and easily be able to assemble scenes out of them. It's quite nice. So, this is an image that I have applied color correction to. If I go over here, this is the color that the surface is supposed to be. And you can see it's about the same. Obviously, it's metal, and I've added some cool material effects, which I add a little bit more of a red tinge in there and stuff like that. But for the most part, this is the color that I want. And it is, you know, if I had fed this color directly, this would just be the color that is in there, that it is showing. So, it's very, very consistent. But, in this case, I'm, I'm deliberately using an HDRI that adds a lot of color tinting. Because if I uncheck this, this doesn't look like gold. This doesn't even look like bronze or whatever the hell this material is. This looks like it's made of iron or something. It looks like a totally different material. Now why is that? Because that doesn't really happen in the real world. I'm using physically accurate shaders. And why is it suddenly changing? Well, the simple answer is that our eyes in the real world adapt to lighting. If we're in an environment that is primarily lit by blue light, our eyes will adapt to show us all the different colors. And we can emulate this adapting in a camera using color correction. And we're going to be using some very similar photography-ish methods. And I'll show you how to do it in Blender. This can also be done in other programs if you render out some specific image format and then do some correction. But in this case, we're going to talk about doing it right in Blender. This way, when you're actually making your materials, you can see it right there in the viewport and see your colors corrected right there. So, as a result, let's actually dive right into it. So, the first step is to understand the color management panel, and at least understand where it is. So if we go over here to our tabs, we can go to our scene panel, and we can scroll down, and there's a little panel called color management. It is brilliant. You can see all kinds of cool stuff in here. You can see Glove Alexandrov's favorite film emulation and various other cool effects. You can even see a bunch of camera looks that have been plugged in to emulate the actual color uh, pollution of a certain lens, if you feel so inclined for that, which is actually can be really, really cool. Um, and then there's this Use Curves button, which will expose little curves. But it exposes something else. It exposes white balance settings for our little curves here. Uh, you see, the white balance settings are this black level and white level. By default, these will be white and black. If I go into preview mode, I'm just going to box this so it doesn't cause any problems with recordings. Or the recording, rather. So, in this case, we can see our colors are still pretty polluted on the scale of things. Matter of fact, they're extremely polluted. Now, how do we get rid of that? Well, the simple answer is we need to know what color, because if we set this, we can basically decide what color we want uh, white to be. So if I say 0.1, for example, you can see this whole thing becomes a lot brighter because I've said anything that registers as, that would normally be 0.1 brightness, becomes 1 brightness. It becomes 10 times as bright, which is quite important. I can say like 0.25, I can, you can make them different values, etc. And you can use this to tint your scene. So I could say like, okay, you know, red, red is normal, but everything else is multiplied a lot because I've said that, you know, it registers as white much lower on the spectrum. So anyway, get play with these a little bit, you'll get used to them. And I can also adjust what the black level is, what is considered black. 
Now, in this case, what we want to do is we want to grab those white and black levels from a certain color in the scene, from how this would play across our surface. This can be done really easily. Just throw it on a plane, point it at your camera, and this doesn't have to be exact, just point it at your camera, or if you want to be really, if you have a specific surface or something that you want to have, like, be in focus to be the main thing that it's corrected for, just make sure that it's aligned with that surface. You know, we can shrink this down, it doesn't need to be very large. In this case, I think it can be right about there. And we're going to make two of them. One for white and one for black. And these are going to be lit using white and black, and we're going to use those to find what values we need to set here. What value needs to be white and what value needs to be black. So, I'm going to add a material. Now you, depending on what kind of materials you're using, you may just pick whatever shaders you're going to be using. In my case, I'll be using my physically based shaders. Here you can find them. Uh, here I'm just going to grab a non-metal. I'm going to dial up the roughness a little bit. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to box this real quick so I can look at it. And I'm going to add a material to both of them. One of them is going to be what I want black to be. Now this doesn't have to be completely black because real world surfaces aren't completely black. They still put off a little bit of light, just a subtle amount. So I want to make this really dark, but not completely black, like point, you know, just really, really dark in this case. And then we'll go in here and we'll set what we want white to be. Again, one, one is probably not the right value, maybe slightly under one in my case, because I'm using physically based shading. So here we are. We've done this. I want to make sure that nothing is too shiny. And now the trick here is there's no way in the actual previewer, the little viewport here, to actually see what the hell the colors are under certain pixels, sadly. So we're going to need to hit Control b box select our little color panels here. And by the way, if you ever want to see how photographers do this in the real world, look up color cards, uh, color correction cards, because they're really cool, and you can use the same thing here. Hit F12 to render. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't have a UV image editor open, it'll open in your 3D view. And what you can do, all you have to do is go into your little UV image editor, and in my case mine is down here in the bottom right, you can see it here, I can see my rendered image, and I can left click, and at the bottom left there in small text, you can see what color something is. We have X, Y, and Z, and then we have the actual values that we rendered. It's important to note that you use the actual values we rendered here, which are the ones furthest on the left that say red, green, and blue. And uh, this is important because we want it to be the actual values coming out of the scene, not the corrected values. So anyway, in this case, you can see we've got 0 .003, 0 .005, uh, 0 .005, and 0 .008 for our black. That's not actually completely black, which is totally okay. And for our white, especially, you'll notice our white color is only show up on the uh, showing up on the screen as 0 .085, 0.137-ish, and 0.226. You know, it's like the brightness values are not correct. And you can also see it's heavily kind of blue tinted, blue and green. So all we've got to do is go into our scene tab and all we've got to do is copy these colors in here. Sadly, there is no way to do a color picker on these, to my knowledge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click, remember these values, in this case, 3, 5, and 8. So 0 0.003, 0 0.005, and 0 0.008. And you'll see in a little rendered image, it's actually updating. This now looks like black. But you can see, because we're using the actual rendered values from the scene, the values themselves haven't changed. They still read the same. This is important because it keeps everything nice and consistent. I'm now going to left click on my white and do the exact same thing. So 8, 14, 23, 0 0.08, 0 0.14, 0 0.23. And you can see, boom, check it. Yeah. Might do 0.24. Anyway, 0.23. Anyway, 
So here you can see we've got ourselves, it's now white and it's now black, and they actually look in the image that way. Let's go ahead and hit Control alt b to remove our little bounding box limiter, and you'll notice, boom, colors are corrected. Now, of course, it's not particularly pretty, but the thing about this isn't necessarily to make a super pretty image. It's to allow you to tell what color something is. This is used a lot in film to make all your shots, even if they're shot in completely different times of day or completely different lighting environments. For example, if you're shooting on set for a whole day, your lighting is going to change a lot from being in the morning to being in the afternoon. It might be overcast during a certain shot or something like that. And to make it all look like it's in sequence, if you've got a particularly hard shot that you've had to make, you know, it might have been several hours since the last scene that was supposed to have been five seconds before. Again, that kind of discontinuity, relatively easy to fix with this. You just hold up a color card, you correct it, and you've removed any sort of lighting. So if all your lighting is orange, you've removed it, because now it's all white. And then later on, you can go in and do something called color grading. Color grading would essentially be this curves. I could say, for example, that I want there to be less red in the shadows and a little bit more red in the highlights. And then I could say, for the blue, I want there to be a lot of blue in the shadows and very little in the highlights. And we can get that kind of like crisp, cinematic, dramatic look. We can kind of play with it a little bit. Or you can pick one of the camera looks or something of that nature. And you can use this to make a photo that really pops, but is also really consistent. It makes it nice and easy to kind of correct your colors, and it also allows you to kind of learn consistent techniques. If I remember what this curve looks like, doesn't matter what scene I'm using, if it'll always be consistent. So anyway, this is kind of a light version of color correction. It'll help you mostly when you're building assets. I would still recommend using an actual color correction suite or something that actually has color correction like Photoshop. Um, but yeah, this is still a really good way to do color correction and especially for quick or interactive color correction. It's pretty good on the scale of things before, after. It's quite good. So hopefully this has got you started on some of your cool little projects, and maybe this will help you when building, especially modular assets, assets that will be used over and over again in your scenes. Because this way, when you make something that looks like gold, it'll stay looking like gold all the time, regardless, and you'll still be able to use HDRI to test out your glorious lighting and make everything look nice and crisp and make all your reflections look pretty. So without further ado, Peace out, Thuluf Tahin. Goodbye. It's good to be back.